Welcome to the topic where we highlight Houston Community College, our students, our programs, and our regions of the community. I'm Todd Duplantis. Thanks to all of you joining us on Facebook Live and YouTube. Glad to have you with us. We're here every Tuesday at 1 p.m. You can also catch the rebroadcast of this show if you don't see us live on HCC TV. And if you're into podcasts, find us in social media as Houston Community College District and download the audio versions of all of our shows, Podcasts at hccs.edu slash podcast. Uh, today we're talking about art and design. The two are closely related fields and here at HCC that cross-discipline collaboration begins in the classroom. We're joined right now by Dr. Kyleen Riley, Dean of Media, Visual and Performing Arts Center of Excellence, and Suzette Brimmer, the Dean of the Consumer Arts and Sciences Center of Excellence. Good afternoon to both of you ladies. Thanks for being here. Hi there. Thanks for having us. I guess we'll start. I don't know who wants to handle the first question. Maybe we'll start with you, Colleen. Um, give me an overview of how these two center of excellences uh, collaborate specifically with the Art and Design Council. How does your COE fit into this? Sure. So um, we've been longtime collaborators, but uh, we recently received accreditation by the National Association of Schools of Art and Design as an institution. And that has brought uh, the Centers of Excellence for Media, Visual Performing Arts, Consumer Arts and Sciences, and Digital Information and Technology much closer together. And I'm going to go ahead and throw the same question to you, Suzette. Maybe you can uh, add in on this as well. Yeah, I, I think the um, the really great thing about it, and Colleen has, has really answered your question, but I think the most fundamental, important thing to us as programs is that we, we've we worked together about in spot, but now we get to work as an entire unit. And that gives all of our programs the kind of exposure that they really need and also find out what their brothers and sisters are doing in their sibling programs. And Suzette, um, this next question is for you. Uh, we've recently, HCC has been accredited by the National Association of Schools of Art and Design. Why is this important for our students? And by the way, congratulations. Um, yes, it, it's important for our students. Any type of accreditation we get for our programs only just add validity, um, not only within our programs, but outside of our programs and outside of HCC. Um, we know that we've always had very talented and exceptional faculty, staff, and students. So this is a way to um, put like a little crown on it from, from on the outside world so that they know about all of the great work that we're doing. You know, when I think about cl cross collaboration between the centers of excellence, I think back when uh, we had the art car uh, that was designed by our HCC students. And we literally brought in students from all across the district. I know you, both of you had students involved with that as well. But, you know, that kind of was was championed by uh, Dr. Kurt Hewen. And it fit in with our strategic plan. You hear about the strategic plan, plan but maybe you two can collab or elaborate on this, on how this cross collaboration fits into HCC's st overall strategic plan. I'll start with you, Dr. O'Reilly. Sure, well, I think it really highlights that HCC is a college of choice. Um, and so it speaks to the quality of our programs, but it also speaks to the way that we center the students' experience in all all of our activities. Um, our students don't always see the divisions that we put in place in departments and programs, um, and particularly our, uh, our creatives. You know, they want to move very freely through the different media that different programs offer. They have different career objectives, transfer objectives. So this really gives us the platform to wrap around those students through a number of programs, um, a number of interactions with faculty faculty from within the disciplines and without the disciplines that they are pursuing and, you know, really um, focus on their student experience, focus on the resources that we have as programs and how we can uh, use them collectively um, and make some, you know, strategic advancements in the kind of technology that we use and the kind of support that we can provide. 
Suzette, um, I know we've worked with you guys a lot with HCC TV and work with your department a lot. Um, is this a new way of thinking with collaborating across the district with different departments? Um, have you always uh, cultured this type of uh, collaboration or is this something that really has just come about in the last few years? No, no, this is something that we've done for years. Um, just, just an example, uh, Professor uh, Shamru has a fabric dyeing class that's under the fashion umbrella. And under Dr. Raleigh's program in uh, Catherine Fields, she has a class where students learn how to screen print. So a couple of students came to uh, Professor Shamru and said, hey, you know, why aren't we screen printing? He said, yes, we are screen printing. We're going to walk over to the fine arts lab. If you look at your syllabus, it, it's already listed. And so these are these are collaborations that have been going on for a long time. We have always practiced if we don't have it and somebody else has it, have it, we have it. So, uh, yeah, so, you know, we can't do screen printing in our building. Some of our fabric design techniques we can't do in our Fannin building, but they can be done in a fine arts building because they have labs that were already built for that many years ago. So to answer your question, this is something that we've done for many years. And because when a student asks something of us and we feel that this is this really works well in a program and for their student experience, we just do it. Yeah. And if I could just, if I could, sorry, offer another example, because I want to make sure that we highlight our partners in digital communication. Um, and we're doing, you know, they, they were in on this collaboration that we had last Friday, and we work quite a bit across the seven art and design programs with virtual reality and augmented reality and um, giving our students cross-disciplinary experience in those platforms as well. And Dr. Riley, this is something that I would imagine your students are going to have to learn long term for when they're getting out in their careers. Because when you do go work for a company and you're working on a project, you're going to have to collaborate with many different departments, many of which you may have not interacted with before. Absolutely. You know, it really goes down to developing problem solving and communication skills and teamwork skills in our students. And those are part of the marketable skills conversations that we have and the employability skills conversations that we have on the program level. Um, but I think it also speaks to making sure that the students see that their experiences are relevant and they're applicable to a number of workplaces as they enter into the industry. And it really gives them um, a leg up as they're preparing preparing for further study or entry into the industry because they've already had very, very structured and um, very uh, comfortable and uh, very supported um, experiences that mirror what they'll sort of have yeah. to go out on their own and <laughs> um, discover for themselves. And Suzette, are you, uh, you're, you're snickering there. Do you, have you had some students who uh, uh, you've kind of told, hey, you're going to be doing this much more in the future when you do go out in the real world and, and start working? Yes, yes, we do. And um, this is what I really have enjoyed with, our, with all of, with our faculty, as well as our students and the way that we have structured our curriculum is that this is something I, that I like to think of it like the karate kid experience where they don't even realize that they're yeah. learning how to work. You know, they wipe on, wipe off. They really don't get it. And then at the end, you know, their professor, like Professor Whitaker will say after Friday's experience, well, this is what, this is what it's like to really produce a fashion show. These are all of the people you would have to work with and you, you didn't even realize it, you know, so that's something that you'll tell them maybe a week or two ago that this, this is the real deal. You put it all those pieces together and next thing you know, you're in a karate tournament. Yeah. Great movie. That's right. Great, <laughs> great explanation there. Okay. Ladies, stick around. Um, we're going to take a short break on the topic. When we come back, we'll learn one creative project powered by art and design. Stay tuned. The topic returns in 60 seconds. It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. You can do it here. But I get it, you're busy. And busy people can't have prediabetes. Oh, I read that wrong. They can, okay. Just go to the site. Thank you. 
you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. If a natural disaster shows up at your doorstep, you can't just turn it away. That's why it's important to prepare for emergencies before they show up. Go to ready.gov slash plan to find the tools and tips you need and make a plan today. Welcome back to The Topic. I'm Todd Duplantis. Thanks for joining us live on Facebook and YouTube. You can always catch the rebroadcast of our show on your favorite cable system within the Houston area. We're known as HCC TV. You can look us up uh, on demand in many cable systems. Some of them just flip the channels and you'll find us, but look for us on your cable system. Also, you can follow us in social media. All of our content is posted in social media under Houston Community College District, and you can download the audio versions of our podcasts at hccs.edu slash podcast. Today, we're talking about design, fashion, film. How do all those things come together? Well, it's a collaboration. And this afternoon, we're joined by Suzette Brimmer, the Dean of Consumer Arts and Sciences Center of Excellence, and Dr. also Dr. Colleen Riley, the Dean of Media, Visual, and Performing Arts. Ladies, welcome back. I didn't get a chance to ask this question in the last segment, but I'll kind of open up the segment with this. Um, when you're talking project, with students and in, in, in you're, you're having them manage a project, but they still want to be artistic and creative. You've got to meet in the middle sometimes when you're doing a project. Um, I'll start I'll start with you, Suzette. What do you tell to your students? You still, we still want you to be creative, but the overall goal is we got to meet this project. Well, that, that's exactly right, Todd. Um, you give out the overall goal. Uh, you have benchmarks that students need to meet at a particular time or place. And then they have to know at the end, this is going to be the final project, that this is what we're looking for. So we um, we slice it up and just and give it out. And then we ask students who feel like what part of the project that they think that they want to own. And then you give them that freedom to take that and run with it. Um, you have to, as a faculty member, um, sort of stand maybe like two feet, but well, our six foot rule now, our six foot rule space and uh, just kind of oversee what they're doing. And if something's not going in a direction that you know that it should be going in or you think would be a better route, you find a nice way to say, well, you know, did you think about doing it this way to, to just kind of guide them in that area? But uh, it's very important that students have that creative licensing yeah. and also the ability to fail. That's right. all part of the uh, the lesson as well. And Colleen, I want to ask the same question of you. Um, it seems like, though, when you go out in the real world, you still want to have that creativity. But overall, you got to get the job done. And a lot of times, um, you know, the uh, the jobs we have in, especially with production, may be a bit boring at times, but you still want to allow the students to be creative. I think that, you know, part of our responsibility is to create the structure that really fosters success in a project so that the student can understand the entire and experience the entire uh, process of uh, having an idea, thinking about ways to execute that idea, and then executing that idea, failing at that execution, and then redirecting and uh, be finally being successful. And the more that we can model that in the way that we approach our pedagogy and the way that we approach the, the concept and the design and the structure of a student experience, the more that they'll understand going into the workforce that they need to create that structure for themselves or recognize mm -hmm. when a structure is being created for them so that they know how to operate within it and still bring their vision to the table. You know, the COVID pandemic has all taught us all to do things different ways. And you've got something brand new that y'all are working on called Film Plus Fashion. Tell us about that. Well, it, it, it's, it started um, from a project from our fashion promotion students um, to figure out a way of how, since we're not meeting and having these large venues in person, so how can we pivot this type of production and have a successful fashion show. So that that I tell you what, one of the big things about COVID that we will have for the rest of our lives is 
how we can be visual, how we can have the same experience and not be all in the, in the same space. But the real beauty of this is that the final project will be visual, but to get it all together, we got an opportunity to work in person, which I, I think must have been an unbelievable experience because we've been seeing each other like two by two tiles, but now we're getting to work together. In this project, this didn't just use film and fashion. Um, you involve cosmetology, okay. drama, <laughs> photography, even some drones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, when all was said and done, we had about 75 students that participated and over 20 faculty and staff. So, um, uh, and it, it just worked like clockwork. Uh, again, pointing back to the structure, um, you know, there were very uh, clearly designated uh, uh, systems or processes or procedures or sequences that the uh, <laughs> that this that everyone um, had to experience, and I had the amazing uh, pleasure of being there for just a few moments on Friday um, when the event took place, and it was it was it was the happiest I felt um, in a really long time seeing. Yeah. Seeing yes. the students and the faculty working so closely together in their element, it just filled up my heart. It was it was tremendous. Um, I'm so excited about uh, what, what we were able to accomplish. And, and you know, Todd, what, what's really nice also with the faculty working together, the students get to see that, which only um, enforces how important it is, these team works. So that um, I thought that was like a great byproduct of of the uh, project on Friday. Yeah. yeah. How are the students enjoying interacting with each other in person? I know each of you uh, had some classes during the pandemic that did meet face to face uh, with social distancing and all the measures. But how are students reacting? We've only kind of been back on campuses in full force for the last month and a half. Um, how are what's been the reaction you've heard from students? Uh, the majority of our students, I mean, they could not wait to get back on campus. And we've been back since last July, um, our lab-based classes. So they've we've had a wonderful experience with it. And, and what I think is that really shows how people are so happy to be back is that they're following the rules. They're, yeah. um, you know, keeping their distances, cleaning their own spaces, um, doing things before and after that they have a space to make certain that we all stay safe. Yeah, yeah. I would say it's been overwhelmingly positive. And I think what's really what's really special about it is the kind of trust that it's fostering mm -hmm. between the students and the faculty and the, the community that it's building and the larger community that came out of this collaboration because it everyone is mitigating their own risk um, in, right. in under COVID. And mm -hmm. so to, to be able to come and be in person and, and be productive and be connected, you know, just, it takes a lot of responsibility and personal ownership. Mm -hmm. And I think our students have really thrived in that. Yes, which is another great lesson right. for them to learn, yes. And the faculty, um, I know we're gonna be talking about the students a little later on in the show, but as deans, what do you think the faculty has gained from uh, working together on a project like this? Go ahead, Colleen. I was going to say they've they've gained well, they they've always had this, but just the overwhelming affection and loyalty yes. of their dean, a hundred percent. This just I really I feel so fortunate to work with such a dedicated faculty and to see them in action, especially after such a long time of navigating online and hybrid instruction. It was just it was just beautiful. So um, I, yes. I I think. A lot of energy came out of it. Yeah. And, 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 you know, these plans did not happen overnight. So while, you know, people were in their own individual spaces, they were thinking, wow, when we have an opportunity to get back, this is what we're going to do. We're going to land and, and we're just going to keep running and, and make it all work. And that Friday's uh, project was a perfect example of that, the, the excitement of being together and, you um, having this project come to fruition. Yeah. Suzette and Colleen, thank you both for joining us this afternoon on the topic. Uh, continued success with your programs, and we look forward to seeing you in the future. When we return, we'll be speaking with two faculty members who will tell us about making, how making film in fashion and how it could all come to life. We'll hear all about it when their topic returns in 60 seconds. 
the faculty at HCC represents the best of the city. They're committed to getting our students to their goals. A four-year degree. Workforce training. A better life. HCC, for everyone, anytime, any way. For more than a year, we have kept you informed with more than 500 remote episodes. But now we're back, bigger and better, with more news and more guests. Join us live every weekday at 10 a.m. on Facebook and YouTube and on HCC TV at noon and 5 p.m. You can watch from anywhere. We go where you go. That one day at PE when they were like yelling at me and then you just linked arms with me. I don't think you know how much like that helped me. I finally like knew that I had somebody. Welcome back to The Topic. I'm Todd Duplantis, and this afternoon we're talking film and fashion, a collaboration across HCC. And we're joined now by Cheryl Whitaker, who's HCC's fashion merchandising professor, one of our professors here, and also Julie Newland, professor of film here at HCC. Welcome to you both. Uh, I know Cheryl, we've talked before. Julie, been on the show, uh, morning show, several times. Thank you both for being here this afternoon. Um, let's start with you, Cheryl. How did you How did you become involved with this project? And we'll get to Julie's uh, take on that. Sure. So each uh, fall and spring semester, the fashion promotion class has the task of producing a fashion show. Now, traditionally, we would uh, film a, or or produce a, uh, a live show in the learning hub. But of course, with all the COVID restrictions, we've had to get really creative in how we can produce these shows. And so really this all started, this particular production started with just a simple conversation, a brainstorming session, if you will, with my colleagues. And then uh, I took it a little further and had a brainstorming session with uh, Ruben Duran over in the XR lab. And that one conversation brought in a whole team of people from various departments. And um, here we are today celebrating what was an amazing production on Friday. And Julie, how did, uh, let's get your take on how you uh, were brought into this project. Well, it was interesting. Uh, Cheryl and Ruben sent me an email with what they had done previously with uh, doing sort of a virtual reality setup for fashion doing their show. And then they also showed me a green screen concept that they had done. And both of those, I know Cheryl was excited that they were able to produce something during COVID, but she was hoping to step up the game. And in the beginning, it was really a blast to meet with them and listen to the ideas that they had and come up with solutions to their problems. And I was really fortunate that everyone that I asked along the way was absolutely willing to jump in with both feet, including the music department, uh, Cheryl stretching out to photography. All of us were willing to jump in and give it give it a whirl. Uh, could that be because it was COVID and we were all tired of being trapped in a cage? Entirely possible. However, we all had a lot of fun and uh, I'm certain the students walked away with quite a bit. I know, um when at HCC TV, when we meet with clients, we always have to find out what exactly they want and then provide solutions. And a lot of times, especially during these times of COVID, we're all doing things differently. It's always a challenge for us to figure out the best way to serve them. Did your students take this on as a challenge on how can we do this? Oh, I've got an idea. I've got an idea. Is that how it worked? That's a that's a great question. And to be honest, Todd, the way that the problem was handled was I went to a fellow faculty member. We talked about uh, what type of technical resources we had. And absolutely, I had to qualify the customers. So uh, with Cheryl, we certainly talked in meetings as a group collaboration. I tried to find out what their needs were and what the scope of the job was. And then from there, we had to try to fit the pieces in. So the students were not necessarily involved in the figuring out the technical because we had a short time frame and myself and the other faculty member figured out our technical problems and then found students who were willing to be crew and helped to bring them together. It was the first time that students had been doing a live television program yeah. in multi-camera switch. 
Uh, it's a class that we kind of put on the back burner at HCC for about the last three years or so. And it's one now that will come back to the forefront. So both myself and Professor Rick Boyd were working very hard to get students to understand the process of live television, which is certainly similar but different than working in a single cam or even a multi-cam television environment right. like a CSI or something. And Cheryl, um, what, what did you learn about this from working with a multi-camera TV production? I learned everything because this was the first time experience <laughs> for me. Uh, it was amazing. Uh, but I think what I'm most excited about is having students exposed to this because technically in the fashion, uh, fashion students wouldn't have this sort of exposure. Uh, but I also think the, one of the greatest things that they learned was not only about this collaborative uh, process, but really what goes on behind the scenes of a production, of a fashion show yeah. production. We all think fashion is beautiful, and it's beautiful on the outside. And I tell my students this all the time, it's beautiful on the outside, but on the inside it's a little dirty because you got to do quite a bit of work. And it, they got to learn things that they didn't expect to learn. So it was right. just a really good experience, I think, all the way around. I'll back that up 100%. Uh, Cheryl, I, I, my students definitely walked away with some friendships and some collaborations that they would have never had the opportunity to make, both with uh, your students who were from fashion, with the cosmetology group, as well as the photography group, students that they would have never been exposed to. They suddenly were exposed in an environment where they had an opportunity to get to know them and watch them do their discipline. Julie, where will people be able to watch this um, in the future? That is an excellent question, and I appreciate you asking that, Todd. Unfortunately, that is not a Julie Newland decision. <laughs> that would be a Donna Pinnock decision, but I believe that we're going to broadcast this, and please, Colleen, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this is going on YouTube. Is that correct, ladies? Uh, well, My honors, it, go ahead, Cheryl. Uh, well, I can tell you, yeah, I know it's going to be on HCC uh, EduTube, of course, uh, we're also going to add, uh, and here, here goes my other, um, always coming up with an idea that Ruben will play along with me. Um, we're also going to create a uh, virtual reality space, uh, gallery space to host it there as well, and to include some of the uh, amazing uh, images that were captured from that day as well. But I, I, I would love to know, hopefully it'll be on YouTube also. Can I make a suggestion? Um, maybe HCC TV. We could we could run it for you guys. You know, if we can get it yeah. out there, we'll uh, we'll be glad to play it. So I would be honored. That. Yeah, that would be That'd amazing. Be all right, so there's a deal. We got some new programming. I'll let our programmers know all about it. <laughs> I want to thank all of you for being on the show today and telling us more about this collaboration. We're all dying to see it. Um, thank you once again for being here. And thank all of you for joining us on the topic. Remember, we're live every Tuesday, 1 p.m. on Facebook Live and YouTube. You can find us as Houston Community College District across all social media and catch the rebroadcast of the show on HCC TV. I'm Todd Duplantis, and I'll see you again next week.